everyone. So I thought it would be fun to like record a couple of vlogs uh, because it's kind of like my holiday this week, although it's almost over, but I can show you what I have been doing. So I have been dyeing uh, some more. These are all natural dyes. Um, let's see. So these are all cochineal, which I have used before. Although usually I would only get these two colors um, because I, I don't know, I just don't like to use a lot of dye stuff. Um, and with cochineal you get beautiful colors with just a couple of grams. But now I added some more and then I got this beautiful plum, um, kind of like eggplant color. And I also got this color with a different mordant. So that was cool. These are matter, although I didn't use a lot of dye stuff, so that's where they're super light. And for these I used mugwort, uh, which I found during uh, hiking. <laughs> and uh, they seem to also grow around my village, so um, I might go and pick some of those. So yeah, I am trying to make a color circle, kind of like the same uh, concept that, um, kind of like same idea from the dyeing workshop in Denmark that I went to and um, really like them. I've also been doing some more spinning and um, this was a really fun experiment. So I don't know if you can see, but it's really uneven. <laughs> But it was really fun to spin. So this fiber uh, I got from Alternate Universe, which is a yarn shop somewhere around Bristol in the UK. And um, I divided it into, well, not really half and half, but uh, I divided it in two parts. And then one part I would spin very thin, and one part I would spin very thick. And you can see I applied them together and then you get this kind of coily effect which I think is really fun and the coils you kind of create while plying it um, Usually it would just look like like this, but if you add a coil, now let me find a really good one. Maybe this one. So you see it has a different kind of effect. And I thought, um, so this will, knit up really nicely but it would be great for weaving as well and I have a little loom so I might try some weaving because um, I have never tried weaving and I have two looms well I'll, they are very small one is like this and the other one is like this so um, it's very small but thought I can and give it a try and then uh, when I was kind of like cleaning out my garage um, as you do on a holiday just you suddenly find the time to do the things that you kind of always wanted to do but wasn't a priority so this week has just been so great um, and I found this uh, felting wool uh, I used to make small felt uh, mushrooms and uh, small animals and um, uh, but I don't anymore so I already picked two colors uh, or I already used two colors to spin little minis and I think they turned out really good uh, they are 100% wool, so I can't use them for toes or heels on socks, but otherwise I would. Um, and I'm going to spin the rest of them. And then, um, so, 
they are two ply and a fingering weight so I might be able to use them in a color work project sometime maybe the yoke of a sweater that would be very cute um, although these aren't the colors that I would usually wear but uh, yeah it would be cute maybe I'll make a sweater for my boyfriend um, yeah but I like these and so what I do there's some leftover sparkly fiber in here as well so what I do is um, I spread them out and usually there will kind of be ah oh, yeah this is perfect so this one actually consists of two braids or two parts so you can just take them apart and I will spin this one on the one bobbin and this one on the other bobbin and um, and I just spun these right after each other so I uh, spun this one and then at the end of this thread I just attached this one and um, so that way I could do two minis at a time and I could do more but um, at the end I don't know I'm just a beginner spinner but uh, for me I can't always attach a new thread sometimes when I uh, want to attach some new wool it just seems to break and uh, then I end up taking the already spun wool apart and yeah so so I ended up just uh, finishing these first before moving on to these and uh, I just if I end up doing more colors on one bobbin I just have to remember the color order uh, because otherwise I cannot ply them together <laughs> which would be a shame um, though it would be fun to kind of uh, try a barber polling effect but that's not what I'm going for here so those are the spinning things I've been up to this week I've been um, trying to reorganize my craft room and I'm going to give you a little tour but beware it is still very messy because I'm still <laughs> reorganizing. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I am the messiest person ever. Um, yeah, so my desk of course like as if there was an explosion um, <laughs> there to be fair I've already filled two boxes am I pointing to the boxes yeah two boxes and one bag to go um, to the attic and uh, mainly because I removed a whole bunch of um, magazine actually there's stuff here on the floor let me just put you down here alrighty so um, this was all filled with magazines like Molly Make Simply Crochet and um, yeah I mean I read magazines and then I don't tend to make anything from them so um, they tend to just you know fill up space so what I did was that I uh, only kept the magazines from this year and the magazines that I've got projects in because I kind of like that um, and I want to keep them in one space so I kept those and then I had all of my knitting and crochet books up there, uh, there, and then I moved some here, the ones that I don't tend to use uh, very often, so, or not at all, but, um, you know, once in a while, like, I don't want to move them to the attic as well, because I might use them, um, but I put the uh, the ones that I do use more regularly or that I just like uh, I put them up there and then I put the rest 
in here uh, with my new tissue paper that I use to wrap orders. Um, I have to go through this as well um, because there's just a bunch of stuff that I don't use. And we have a really big attic, so I thought it would be um, a shame not to use that. Um, so I have... <laughs> so what I have is a big space here. And right now I'm not quite sure what I will do to fill it, fill it. And I might put my hand spun yarn in there. I might put some of this yarn in there because this space is kind of overflowing. Um, but yeah, this is actually a good place for books and stuff. So I might, yeah, I might just use it for documents and books. And then uh, hand dyed yarn is up here. And up there is a Megurumi and a t-shirt yarn. Um, yeah, and then this space I haven't really touched because there isn't much. Um, and But I'm looking to buy a closet for this space. Um, although I'm not... You know, a closet is great, but you don't want to, like... Mm, what's the word like build yourself in is that good English I don't think so well it's just I don't want to put as much furniture in as I can because that tends to make a space smaller and kind of you know gives you kind of like claustrophobic feeling so that's what I want to avoid and I kind of like empty space so I'm just gonna see how much I can remove from the rest of the closets um, so that I might not have to buy a new one or, you know, a second hand one, but yeah. Um, yeah, and then, so here's just a bunch of stuff. I usually have a bag for, like, paper, uh, paper waste that is also waste. Um, I don't know what to do with that box. Uh, this is all of my samples in it. Uh, I put some samples in that bag to go upstairs to the attic. This will also be going to the attic, which is just random stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm just looking whether I have any more stuff that needs to go upstairs, but um, I will definitely be keeping this here. Although I want to find a good place for this. I actually wanted to hang it on the wall, but then it just kind of slumps like that. So, um, not sure how to display it. I think I might just leave it here. I did put it on a new tie. Uh, it was on some cotton thread, and now I've put it on a leather tie. And I have added all of the recipe cards. So, for example, 20% alum, and this is the second dye bath of matter. Yeah, so that's where I am right now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, right here I store all of the boxes that I can reuse for sending out orders. Um, it's not the prettiest, but from the rest of the room, you can't really see it, so I'm fine with it. I don't want to to make the boxes smaller or I'll have more uh, more work putting them together again. So yeah, and then here, so I have one closet here. Uh, this is some of the hand dyed yarn. Uh, that's a work in progress. That is a finished object which is very cute, but I don't know what to do with. Um, I have my stationery in here, I have my whips in here, I have punch needle works in there, and then here is just paper envelopes and paper bags, and that is plastic, like filling material and uh, plastic air bags. Um, then here I have my bird in a box kits and some extra material for that. I have 
wool in here and cotton, well, mostly cotton and some sock yarn in here. I have cool cotton in there, warm cotton in there, referring to the colors. I have mohair and other lacy yarns in here. And I have bulky yarns in here. Here is my spinning, spinning stuff. This is kind of like, well, also hand a yarn, some tea that I like to put with my orders, and this is a box of decoration, and I wanted to put that in there, <laughs> but of course I'm lazy. Um, more yarn here, and more yarn there, and some hand-dyed stuff. Yeah, and then we have... DIY kits here from all the Molly Makes magazines, swatches here, little bits and bobs there like charms and stuff, business cards, wrapping paper, not ideal but yeah and here's also cards, uh, yeah this just, uh, I won't even talk about that. So. So I'll just uh, keep on going and um, I'll check in with you in probably a couple of hours. I am feeling pretty proud of myself for cleaning up. So much space! <gasps> There is still a big box over there with uh, natural dyeing stuff and I might get a little closet to put here to put all the natural dyeing stuff in. But I'm kind of worried. I'm kind of worried because, um, well, well let's fix this tripod. So I'm kind of worried because whenever I get a new closet, it tends to just fill up and uh, leaving me wanting even more storage space. And I like empty space because it gives you a lot of calm and breathing space. But that box just has to go. It's been there for months, months, maybe even more than a year. So yes, I need to uh, do something about that. Uh, I just don't know what is the way to go. If I want a narrow closet but a high one or not so high closet and then a wider one. Um, or clean up more stuff here and put the natural dyeing stuff in there. Also an option. Yeah, so I still have to make some decisions about that, but I have come a long way. Now, and what I wanted to show you was what I have found in the uh, cleaning up process, which is this uh, scarf. Uh, that was supposed to be a uh, design but um, I never got around to finishing it. This is all I have. Literally all I have. So I don't know whether I should just continue because I have enough yarn. I have about six balls of this uh, this stuff which is Escapia's Secret Garden. Um, it's wide enough for a shawl I quite, I mean a scarf, I quite like it. Um, it has a kind of, um, it's a, how do you call this, not basket stitch but maybe elongated moss stitch. It's some kind of moss stitch, but instead of one pearl, one knit, you do two pearl, two knit. And then for two rows um, before alternating. Not sure. Um, also, these are the tulip swivel 
uh, needles, which I really like. Yeah, so I'm not sure. I could I could continue with a scarf, and if I do that, I have the option of either using this pattern the whole way, or maybe like halfway, change it into a different pattern, which I really like. Um, <clears throat> or I like repurpose it and maybe make it into a bag of some sorts. Put a button here, but I know I wouldn't use that. Uh, I think a scarf is more, um, uh, is a thing that I would use more often. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Do you like it? Should I continue or should I just leave it? What I also did yesterday was uh, I was um, cleaning up the uh, DIY kits. I have a whole box of DIY kits uh, all from Molly Makes magazines. And um, in that box I had also put a little DIY kit from Dandelion, um, who is a embroidery artist from uh, New Zealand or Australia. Um, and she has these beautiful tiny hoops that you can put on necklaces um, and my kid already had the necklace um, and you can stitch just tiny designs on there which I was completely in love with and I decided to embroider the little bird That used to be part of my logo um, for, for my uh, old business which was Crafty Queens and um, two years ago or maybe even three years ago I rebranded to New Leaf Designs because I feel like it's more it's more me uh, than Crafty Queens I kind of outgrew this although I loved it um, I started this uh, blog when I was 17 or 18. No, I might be lying. No, I'm definitely lying. Uh, when I got back from my my uh, year in China, so I was 21, 21 I think. And um, I have a lot of creative women in my family and they are my crafty queens. Um, yeah, but after a while it just uh, didn't, um, I wanted to break out of the cute image um, that I had with Crafty Queens. Uh, I was doing a lot of amigurumi at the time when I started Crafty Queens, but then I transitioned more into a garment and accessory and home decor design. And uh, I just uh, felt like it was time for a new name. But I still really liked the little bird that I drew for the logo, so I stitched it into this little hoop and I am so in love with it. I just, I just love it. And so it's on the necklace. And it was very easy to do actually. Um, yeah, the stitching took some time because uh, I had to split the threads for the, um, the feathers and the eye. Um, yeah, but other than that, it was a very quick and oh, and I love it. I love it so much. I'm not sure if I will make the necklace shorter or or if it's okay like this. I like it to be more like this. Um, so I'll see about that. I have an extra jump ring to make the uh, necklace smaller. Yeah. So uh, I did that yesterday. I've just uh, it's been such a such a nice week. I've been 
having just so much more time and breathing space to do the things I want to do, um, I've recorded a, a video that will go um, into my masterclass on a stranded color work that I will be um, launching on my Patreon page um, later this year. It's uh, still not finished, but uh, I'm getting there. Um, yeah, it's just been such a great week. And uh, last weekend, my fiber share package arrived, so that was fun. And I showed you all on Instagram uh, what I got from uh, my lovely, lovely fiber share partner, Sherry. Um, and I got the yarn right here. She also sent me two lollipops. <laughs> One was like this, uh, just this chocolate lollipop and it was like chocolate fudge on a stick and uh, she said it was from this really old shop uh, where the floorboards creaked and just all cute uh, cupboards and stuff and I just oh, I could just imagine it well in my head it was like the candy store uh, which uh, Harry Potter goes to when he's in the um, oh I don't know the little village that they go to with the school I don't really know the Dutch name. Um, yeah, so it kind of reminded me, or or that's the picture that I have, and um, uh, yeah, I just, I'm gonna show you the yarn because it is amazing. Um, I just, this is, I think this is my favorite. She asked me what my favorite fiber is, and it is alpaca. I love alpaca. It's um, super soft, super squishy, and I learned to spin with uh, alpaca fiber because I learned to spin at an alpaca farm. Uh, and um, it's just, it's, it just, it brings back memories. Uh, it's super soft. It is super nice to knit with. And um, yeah, so she sent me some alpaca fiber or alpaca yarn. And um, apparently Sherry's grandma has a, has an alpaca farm. And this yarn uh, comes from Trooper, who is one of their alpacas. And uh, the farm is called Acorn Acres. Acorn Acres Alpaca Farm. Um, I should look up where that is, because I don't know. <laughs> but you know, somewhere in America, but um, I don't know the, uh, uh, the town or city where it is. Um, and it's so soft, it's just so squishy. And I, um, I don't know what I'm gonna make yet, but it feels good around my neck. Um, or I might knit a couple of squares for my uh, Chunky Memories blanket. I think that would be very nice too. Um, she also sent me some lovely navy sparkly yarn because I love sparkles. Um, there is no tag, so I'm not sure if it's um, good for socks. So um, I think I'm just gonna play it safe and uh, pick a different color for the toes and heels. But yeah, so cute. Um, and I mentioned that I love green um, and especially kind of uh, sage green. And this is just a beautiful color. It's by Manos del Uruguay. Uh, it's a uh, baby alpaca and uh, pima cotton. And um, it's just super, super soft. Um, so I don't know what I would make with this. I do know I have uh, another skein of uh, pima cotton. Maybe also the baby alpaca mix. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I'll have to incorporate this into something. Or maybe I'll just make really beautiful lacy mittens with it or something. That would be nice. And because I had mentioned I love uh, Harry Potter, um, she got me this one which is called Plum Pudding. 
and it's from the Home of Frolicking Feet uh, from Maine um, and it's a superwash merino it does have a high twist uh, but I would need to search for uh, minis for toes and heels but look at this I'm not sure if it would stripe possibly possibly so um, yeah these will be turning into some fun socks I'm thinking of uh, um, knitting them around Halloween that might be good have I told you the name it's called plum pudding um, yeah excited to work with that and last but not least Yorkshire Dale yarn by homespun wonders on Etsy which is a DK merino uh, yarn and it looks very interesting I don't know how this will work up but it will work up very fun I think uh, the colorway name is Ivy I might use this for a baby cardigan maybe uh, or a hat yeah but it's it screams baby uh, baby clothes to me so uh, I think I'll use it for that. Yeah. Yay! So happy with my fiber share package. <laughs> I also sent mine uh, two weeks ago and I hope it arrives soon because uh, I'm really excited to hear what my fiber share partner thinks of it. So I had an idea about what to do with the empty space in this closet and I think I think I like it so um, I believe I already mentioned it that I was thinking of putting some uh, hand spun yarn in it and I have so here is my hand spun yarn and then uh, some bobbins there because the bobbins I've always just put on the floor and it's just uh, yeah um, so I thought that was nice to put away in here um, as you can see, I have <laughs> a lot of stuff in this closet. I just love these little uh, bits and bobs. This is a, a banana cat. I got it from my uh, brother. And uh, this is a little bunny from Japan as well. Oops. I got it from one of my um, classmates. Uh, this is from a felting kit that I also got in Japan. And here's a little, um, what are they called? Nano block? I think nano block. And I got this uh, in Taiwan. And then I made this little house. And this is a birthday cupcake I got from my friend May, who is Ice Pandora. Uh, so, so cute. <laughs> I got this paint by numbers. Uh, from my parents last Christmas uh, because I thought it looked like Momo <laughs> yeah lots of fun stuff in here hi guys so it's now two days later um, I look like crap <laughs> I have been uh, we've been working at, on the kitchen the whole day we are taking off the uh, the fronts of the uh, cupboards and uh, sanding them uh, like cleaning them and uh, painting them uh, so the sanding took all morning and I have uh, <laughs> my back is hurting um, and then we uh, we cleaned them with this special kind of degreaser and uh, now the first coat of paint is on I just remembered that I had ordered something for the kitchen that I can show you because um, we are not only painting the fronts of the cupboard in this kind of uh, sage green color kind of a very like dark green grayish kind of uh, tint uh, I don't really have anything here that resembles it except maybe yeah maybe 
kind of like this shade, so like a grayish green. Um, maybe like like this, but it's dif it's difficult to picture it uh, without even knowing my kitchen. So uh, uh, the cupboards were light gray. Um, uh, they were pretty, uh, but. Yeah, I just kind of, I didn't like the handles because they were very worn. Um, so, and I wanted to uh, replace those. But then we found out that, um, well, of course, the, the handles that were on them, they used two screws. And the handles that I wanted, which were just kind of these bulbs, only used one. So we would have to fill them up. And we would have to paint over them so then I thought okay well why not paint a different different color so we chose something darker because the kitchen is very very white and our living room is very very dark uh, or a, a lot darker because there's a, a wooden floor and a uh, rust colored reddish um, just stone wall and then there are um, there is a white ceiling and dark brown um, wooden beams and then the kitchen those wooden beams are painted white the cupboards are light gray fridge is white of course so it was all it was very very light um, and the tiles are white and light gray and I thought because you don't really see the tiles um, and I thought having dark cupboards might make them pop. So, um, the uh, knobs, are they called knobs? Knob is a weird word. Uh, let's just go with door handles, but they're not really handles. Anyway, the ones that I picked are these, which I really like. So, this will be a darker green than uh, the green from the cupboards. Oh, I still have some pink here. <laughs> so this is a darker green and um, yeah, really like these. Um, uh, I hope it will give a kind of like a farm or a, like a romantic farm feel to the kitchen just to make it more homey, more cozy. Um, Yes, that's what we've been doing today. I started at 10, uh, just removing the cupboards, um, the doors, and then um, we started sanding, and then we were done sanding around 3. Uh, we did have a lunch break. Um, and now it is 6 o'clock, and we just finished the first layer of uh, primer. Or we're just gonna do one layer of primer and then two layers of paint so yeah <laughs> uh, so I don't have any makeup on I I didn't really bother so yeah oh natural <laughs> uh, but I also wanted to show you um, a pair of socks that I started yesterday yesterday was a really fun day I spent the day at my in-laws uh, because it was my mother-in-law's birthday last week and uh, so we had a really nice picnic out in their garden um, and afterwards yesterday evening uh, we went to the casino <laughs> which was still a late birthday present for me um, that was really, really fun. I had never been to the casino and uh, it was, um, yeah, one of the things on my wish list. So yeah, we uh, all got dressed up like James Bond or, you know, like, yeah, just really fancy. Um, and we went to the casino. We were the most fancy people there. <laughs> Everyone was dressed very casual or like, like business, business like, um, but yeah, there we were in floor length dresses, <laughs> but I had lots of fun. Um, yeah, so that was yesterday and, uh, while I, I was at my in-laws, I started a pair of socks, uh, which are the Wool and the Gang, um, kind of magic socks. And the idea is that you get a sort of leopard print um, which is kind of working out. 
So I'm pleased with that. Uh, this is the ball of yarn and you start from the middle uh, and then first you do a ribbing with one color and then you do several stripes uh, and the idea is you need a, a specific gauge to do the leopard, leopard spots and the stripe section um, the uh, <laughs> these stripes are meant to be exactly one round, so 60 stitches on the dot. And um, if if you have um, if your stripe runs out after less than one round, you need to you know change your needle size. Or if you have more than one round, then you also need to change your needle size. And I will give you directions for that. So um, I started out with a 2.5 millimeter needle because somewhere I had heard that for this uh, pattern you need a really loose gauge so I thought okay two and a half millimeter but then um, when I read the instructions and I looked at my stripes I noticed that I actually had to knit much tighter so I switched to a 2.25 millimeter needle and then I just kind of knit on the tips of my needles I do have a two millimeter needle here, but I didn't have it with me yesterday, so I could switch to that one right now. Um, yeah, but with the very tight gauge, my um, uh, leopard spots are seeming to work out, although I realize that I will have to finish these socks just um, in one go. I did all of this yesterday. And I will have to do them in one to go because otherwise I won't have the same gauge anymore. And I actually thought this was going to be a nice pair of vanilla socks just for whenever. But um, yeah, not. <laughs> um, but that's okay. I'm already uh, almost done with uh, the first sock. And it actually tells you to do an afterthought heel. But um, if I do an afterthought heel for... Uh, cuff down socks, I am worried that I won't get the, the placement of the heel right um, because, you know, I ha I wanted to try it on to, you know, to see for the toe. Um, so I decided to do a German short row heel, which is the same one uh, that I have a tutorial video for. So you can just search simple toe up socks, German short row heel, and then you'll find my video and uh, that heel works for cuff down or toe up. So uh, this is a cuff down sock, but I was still able to use that heel. And I left about 14 stitches um, in between the double stitches because I found that um, a shallower heel works better for me otherwise it just becomes very pointy and um, yeah so this is a very well fitting heel for me and I really like these socks um, so so yesterday when I was at my in-laws, I asked them, well, does this look like leopard print to you? Am I doing it right? And they say, well, it looks more like, uh, and they said this website, there is a Dutch website, it's kind of like a weather forecast website, uh, uh, it shows you, it's, it's kind of like rain radar or something. So it shows you where the rain is and it kind of like this cloud, you know. Um, and they, these are the colors that they use. So then green would be the country and then <laughs> these would be the rain clouds. Anyway, so that's what it kind of reminded them of. And yeah, these might become my Bayeradach socks, um, which I found really funny. But, um, yeah, so I will be knitting on this uh, tonight 
to see if I can uh, finish the first sock. I have heard that these socks are not really uh, suitable for people with larger feet because uh, the leopard print part run runs out very fast. So um, if you have large feet, then, you know, after the leopard print, there is just blue for um, the toe. And if you have large feet, then the toe section will kind of you know, go past your toe, so it kind of looks weird. Uh, so it's um, it's more suitable for people with smaller feet, like me. Um, yes, so I will show you more of these socks very soon. Okay, so now we're just gonna have dinner. Uh, probably watch another episode of Stranger Things. I've watched them all, but I've j I'm just addicted, so I'm re-watching all of them. Uh, and then uh, another layer of paint this, uh, this evening. Um, and I'm not sure when I, will putting, when I will be putting this online, but I might be able to show you the before and after picture of the kitchen. That will be quite nice. Um, I was actually planning to do a shop update today, uh, August 11th, but uh, didn't happen. I don't think it's gonna happen today because uh, I'm actually thinking of going um, to switch my shop from Etsy to my own platform because I found out that X Etsy kind of takes 20% of earnings. And I thought they only took 5%, so that was kind of a blow. Um, and my own platform is also easy to use, it's just, you know, Etsy is more known, but then I thought, uh, is it really worth 20% of my earnings? Probably not. So yeah, I'll be looking into that. So that means the shop update will be a little bit later, but um, it'll probably be online before this video is out. But uh, as always, if you want to know uh, about my shop updates, uh, follow me on Instagram, which is at newleafdesigns.nl and subscribe to my newsletter, which you can do in the link tree um, of my Instagram profile. Okay, I'm gonna go have dinner and I'll see you soon.
what's this? What's this? What's this? Organicon. A vegan friendly yarn. Um, wastewater created in the production of this yarn is recycled and this yarn is GOTS certified which is a global organic textile standard. Okay. Intrigued. Ooh, let's see what it is. So cute! Look at that! So it's a new yarn by Scapius, which is called Organicon. Will it focus? It's a very light font. See, Scapius Organicon. Premium blend. What, what is it then? It's 100% organic soft cotton. That is so, so lovely. This one is called Bright Ocean, and this one Glacier. Look how well these go together. Let's see how many shades they have. Wow! So many beautiful colors. So they kind of, these kind of all go together, right? Yeah, and then some neutrals. Oh, that's beautiful. It's so soft. So soft. I mean, I don't know if you know, they're a uh, Cotton 8 yarn, which is also 100% cotton yarn, and it's one of my favorite yarns of theirs. Uh, because it's cotton, it's very thin, and it doesn't have any sheen to it. I don't really like, like, sheen of a uh, mercerized cotton. Uh, but this one is also not mercerized, and it kind of has, um, the same thickness, I would say. So, well, very thin. Um, but it's so soft! Cotton Aid is soft, but this is much softer. Yay! just have three colors that I don't have names for yet and um, I find it well not super hard but it is kind of um, difficult to put names onto colors because for me the name of a colorway is really important because sometimes it makes me want to buy the yarn 
Um, yeah, sometimes I buy a yarn more for the name of it than for the actual color or, you know, um, I do like the color, but um, the name is just, yeah. I love Harry Potter themed yarns, and although uh, they might not be the colors that I would usually go for, I love the references. I just, it makes me feel part of a community, um, and uh, it's always nice if you get an exclusive uh, item. So, yeah, I just really like putting good names on yarn. So sometimes I just go with whatever, um, like this one. Yeah, this is one, um, it's one of my very, very first colorway names called Coral Crush because it is coral and, you know, Coral Crush. Yeah, it just, it's a nice name, I think. So, so I'm keeping that in there. But, and um, one of the other colorways that I dyed for my very first update was Sunshine Daisy's Buttermellow, and, which is the Harry Potter reference. Um, and it's the, the spell that uh, Ron tries in his rat, Sunshine Daisy's Buttermellow, turn this stupid, yet rat, stupid rat yellow. Um, so I thought that would be really fun uh, for a yellow colorway, but for um, for these, <laughs> I have some Stranger Things related names. Um, so this one is called Eleven's Dress, uh, which I really like. Um, it's it's the dress with the white Peter Pan color that you know. Um, stars in many of her fight scenes. Then there is Blank Makes You Crazy, uh, which is something that Mike says to uh, Eleven in the last season. Um, Enzo's at seven, which kind of makes me want to cry, and I'm not gonna tell you why because I'm, I might tell you spoiler, but yeah, Enzo's at seven. And Cherry Slur Blech. Cherry Slurpee. This one as well. Cherry Slurpee. Um yeah, for the wonderful Alexi. Ooh. I have phone call. Uh these are also Enzo at seven. And you might notice that these are on some new bases. This is a mohair base. I've never dyed mohair before and it was super fun to do. Um, it takes the color really differently and it's just, it's just, I love it. <laughs> and, um, and then there's this one, which is 100% wool and it's 105 meters um, for 100 grams. Uh, I'm not sure what weight that is. We don't really work with yarn weights here in the Netherlands, but it might be Aaron or Chunky. It might be Aaron. Uh, yeah, so it's kind of thick and thin. It's um, very thick in places, and then it can also be very thin. So that would give um, a really nice effect um, for a, a hat, a cardigan, sweater, maybe some cables. That would be really fun. Um, weaving would be perfect with this yarn. Uh, I also have that in this color. I haven't yet named this one. Um, I am thinking of Iridium because, uh, oh, it matches my nails, uh, because I'm also a Stardew Valley geek, <laughs> and this is just the color of Iridium bars, but I'm not sure if someone else will relate to that, so I'm still on the fence, but uh, yeah, for me, it's just Iridium. <laughs> um, then I have a little darker purple color but not as dark as this one kind of in the middle 
Uh, so this one still needs a name. I was thinking Dumbledore uh, because, but uh, his robe in the very first movie, I think, was uh, purple like this. Um, but in the movies after that, it's uh, it's more like an icy blue or a gray. Uh, so I'm not sure if I would um, still name a Dumbledore. But um, yeah, in my head, Dumbledore always wears purple. But yeah. Um, Let's see, and then I have Sage, which is a lovely soft green, almost like my dress. And I have two other greens. And these would go so well together. These are all on the same base, which is 80% wool, 20% Rami. I still haven't named these two. Um, maybe I'll call this one Markwood. Also, Stranger Things reference. That's a good one. Okay, and then this one. My boyfriend would say something like slime, but yeah, I'm not gonna call it slime. <laughs> See, like a colorway name can make, like, make or break it. So that's why I like to put a lot of uh, time and effort into it. But uh, yeah, I also keep like a, li a little notebook. I will say um, light purple is love potion, light yellow is ginger, and then uh, darker purple, yeah, uh, yeah, you get the gist of it. So I would be noting all of the colorway names down so that in the future it will be easier because I don't really have recipes for colorway, colorways because um, um, I'm not gonna say it's impossible with natural dyeing, but um, it might turn out different every time. That's why I'm just, I'm not going uh, to recreate uh, a colorway, you know, every, every skin of yarn is gonna be unique, but some might have the same name, but I think that's okay. Um, I never really dye sweater quantities of yarn it's not really possible for me yet so yeah so that's where i'm at now uh yeah big pile of yarn right here uh and as i think i've said it before in these vlogs but i forget uh was that i am going to sell these yarns via my own website and not on etsy um, because Etsy takes a ridiculous rate, um, and I hadn't noticed before, so I'm gonna be uploading them to my web shop, which is just newleafdesigns.nl, and then you just click the tab that says shop. Um, yeah, I'm gonna see how that goes, because until now I've only added digital items, uh, I'm gonna see how it goes with stock holding items and I'm gonna add a very very interesting feature which is free shipping above 35 euros um, and yeah I'm really excited for that so you'll see um, when it goes live I hope to have edited this vlog before then I probably will have because getting it uploaded to the website will take um, some more time. Uh, so today I am expecting groceries delivered. I have a live video coming up which is a Q&A. It's not, I'm not doing the live but I'm gonna be watching it uh, on just business related stuffs. Um, and what next? I'm gonna paint my kitchen uh, cupboards one more time. I've put on another layer this morning and I'm gonna put another layer of paint on the other side uh, this afternoon. So yeah, together with, you know, finishing uh, labeling the yarns, photographing the yarns, putting them on the website, that's going to be a full day, I think. Yep. Um, so.
So yeah, I'm not really sure because these are vlogs and I don't really know how to end vlogs, but I guess it just works like a podcast. Uh, I'll be sure to record a proper podcast soon. Momo's on the chair next to me. Hey Momo. Can you see her? Um, yeah, I'll be recording, ow. I'll be recording a proper podcast soon, um, yeah, but right now I just have too many things going on all at the same time, so you'll have to do with these vlogs for, for now. <laughs> okay, well, I hope you have a very, very nitty, crochet, crafty time, uh, until I see you next. And thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye!